to tech brothers with Ahmed today we are going to answer this question you just joined a company as ETL developer you hear this term staging database from your ETL colleagues what does this mean to you or what you understand from here so first of all what is a staging database staging database is the landing area or the very initial database uh, that you can use uh, to get the data from multiple sources and put in that database and then you can further process your data and put into data warehouse or data mart so there are three four uh, th there could be multiple reasons uh, and uh, during my experience uh, what i understand uh, there these are the three points uh, where i would use the data uh, staging database there, there, there is uh, first of all we need to understand this one that we do not uh, have to have used staging databases okay so if you are reading data from one of the source and you want to uh, load the data into the data warehouse you do not have to have uh, load the data into the staging database but uh, there, there are scenarios where we have to have used or it's good technique to use the staging database one of the um, when you are doing upset uh, statements let's say you are reading data from a flat file and then uh, uh, you are inserting new records to the table and uh, updating the old records so if you are reading the data uh, by using flat file source and then uh, inside the data flow you are using OLEDB command transformation for the update and delete part of uh, the, the for the data flow task so any rows uh, they are they will be doing row by row operation as OLEDB is going to generate a, a, a SQL statement for each of the row so that make the process really slow how about we will have a database called it staging database we we'll load the our flat file as it is to the staging then we create a package and then just load the new records by using data flow task and look up into the table and then create a store procedure for our absurd so we can use the update and the delete or even we can have uh, maybe we do not want to use data flow at all we have now the data in the staging table and then we have to perform upset uh, to the final table we can use a store procedure and inside the store procedure we can use merge statement that can perform um, the insert update or delete so there are multiple techniques we can use for the inserts maybe we would like to do data flow and uh, redirect the rows if they are not matching and all that and for the uh, update and delete we can, would like to use the store procedure so that's that will give us a big benefit when we are doing upsets and we have the staging database let's go to the next one uh, incremental process so if you are doing the incremental process uh, and uh, you have different techniques uh, you want to compare your data instead of comparing the data uh, you are reading data from a flat file you are reading the data from Oracle and uh, you need to compare the data uh, to the SQL server table so instead of uh, just uh, reading from the sources and trying to compare inside the data flow task by using uh, uh, those lookups or um, you know by if you have to insert it or update it uh, and um, uh, you might want to come up uh, with the staging database insert the data there and uh, then write a store procedures and implement your different logics there to build this incremental process for your data warehousing or for your simple database process so next uh, uh, let me tell you another example uh, we are extracting data from flat files uh, and uh, this this could be a big performance issue we are reading the data from a um, different flat file or excel file or xml files and uh, uh, we are getting uh, some duplicate records so one way we read the data from us a flat file excel file or xml file use our aggregate transformation or use our sort transformation to get the distinct values or distinct rows from that source and put into the destination that can be really uh, slow process as is in uh, as uh, aggregate transformation and sort transformation they are asynchronous transformation they block uh, block the flow they will put everything in memory and then they start processing so in those cases uh, we can put the data into the staging database tables uh, and then uh, we can write sql queries uh, and uh, uh, get the distinct values uh, from our staging database and put uh, into the final destination then imply apply different transformations uh, th that can uh, help us uh, to boost the performance so 
for the performance uh, if uh, there are scenarios where you, you have to apply asynchronous transformation you you might want to use the staging database put the data there implement all the t-sql parts uh, and uh, apply set based approaches instead of uh, applying the transformation which are really slow in ssis packages now the another scenario can be where uh, you are reading the data from multiple sources uh, and you do not want to load the data till all the sources are not ready so what you can do you can have the jobs uh, uh, created uh, that will load the staging database uh, from multiple sources at different times uh, and once the last job complete uh, then you can uh, trigger the final job that will read the data from staging tables uh, and uh, put to the data warehousing or any other uh, further uh, database where you are loading the data so that uh, most of the time uh, we for the staging database uh, the recovery mode um, uh, we, we keep it in a, a simple recovery mode because uh, we do not we don't really care about the transaction transactions here so that make it really fast uh, when uh, we will do the bulk inserts uh, into the staging database uh, so keep it a uh, simple recovery mode uh, and instead of uh, full uh, we do not need to have this one as we are not uh, uh, restoring the transaction logs and all those kind of thing so when you are going to design uh, ETL uh, framework or ETL uh, infrastructure or ETL uh, uh, module, uh, whatever you call it, uh, for your uh, for your uh, uh, company, uh, consider all these scenarios. So uh, performance, uh, incremental loads. Uh, and uh, different uh, timings for uh, extraction of the data coming from different sources uh, and uh, uh, also with the slow transformations uh, and what uh, uh, what you can do when the data is in the uh, data is in the uh, database and you can apply set based queries instead of uh, implementing the slow transformations so consider all those aspects uh, and talk with the team and uh, where i wherever i had been working i had been working with the uh, different companies with the, with the, even i i know the friends are working with the different companies and uh, we talk about these different uh, issues uh, staging database is a good solution uh, uh, let, let, let me explain one more scenario so you read the data from oracle and you load the data to your sql server you redirected some rows and all that now what happened you found out okay there are some rows they were incorrect rows or they were redirected and you want to take a look so what is happening you have to go back to oracle and query those tables and everything if you have the data on the staging database uh, on your own sql server you do not have to go back to oracle or you do not have to dig into the files uh, to find uh, those uh, records which created the problem so you can go back to the staging database and uh, um, uh, just take a look from uh, there most of the time the staging databases will be truncated on each of the load so if your job is running one time you will truncate those tables reload them so the data will be available to take a look for next 24 hours in the staging area thanks very much for watching this video and i hope this will help and uh, i will see you in next video